All right, yesterday, the Taliban announced the names of some key members of Afghanistan's new interim government. Among them, Siraj Jadin Haqqani, the head of the terror group known as the Haqqani Network, who is wanted by the FBI. He has been named the Taliban's interim interior minister. Also part of the terror-studded cabinet are four of the five Guantanamo detainees whom former President Barack Obama released in 2014 in exchange for former U.S. Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl. Interestingly, or I should say prophetically, it was only about a week after that prisoner exchange that FRC's Executive Vice President, Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, was interviewed by CNN and gave this prediction. My point is that we have traded for a guy that is uh, guilty of a, of a crime that is actually punishable by death. We traded him for five of the worst uh, Taliban leaders in Guantanamo, two of which are mass murderers, all of which will be back on the battlefield and all of which will be threats not only to Americans there, but to the Afghan people because before we got there, they were killing Afghans in brutal ways. So we now have four of Gitmo's worst Taliban leaders now heading up a government. And what is the U.S. State Department's concern? That the caretaker cabinet is not inclusive, as it has no women, really. Well, with me now to talk about this and more is Congressman Jody Heiss, who is a member of the House Oversight Committee and uh, is from the state of Georgia. Congressman, welcome back to the program. Tony, always great to be with you. Thank you for all you do to keep us informed as to what's happening in our country and our world. Well, Jody, I know that you have been on top of this because there are a lot of Americans still left behind and there are religious minorities who are at great risk uh, under the Taliban government. Um, are you, I mean, I, I just think this administration is tone deaf that they're, they choose to express concern over the lack of diversity in a cabinet filled with terrorists. It's unbelievable. Uh, and we have untold numbers. We don't even know how many numbers of American citizens that are still over there. Uh, according to the administration's own numbers from two weeks ago, they said there were between ten and 15,000 Americans there. We only got under 6,000 out of there. So just doing the math by their numbers, there's between four and 9,000 U.S. citizens that yet remain, but now they're telling us there are only about 100 American citizens. What happened to the other thousands that we don't even know how many U.S. citizens are there, let alone SIV people? And yes, Tony, our office for the last two weeks or so, uh, all, virtually 24 7, trying to get people out of Afghanistan, and heartbreakingly, the biggest problem we had was working with our own government, who was the obstacle on every front, preventing us from moving forward, getting people out. So, you know, we ended up, like so many others, working with individuals on the ground there in Afghanistan, and we were have been able to rescue tons of people. But unfortunately, there have been tons of people we have not been able to rescue, and they remain there with threat of their life to this day. Now, Congressman Heiss, uh, I've gotten reports uh, both through the media and, and direct from those involved uh, that uh, those charter flights, uh, those uh, charter flights, uh, privately chartered, that the State Department is not giving them the approval necessary to land in uh, third party uh, countries, nor are they allowing them to land at Department of Defense controlled air bases. Uh, so they're basically stuck. They have no place to go. But yet the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, yesterday said, we're working around the clock with NGOs, with members of Congress and advocacy groups, providing any and all information and doing all we can to clear any roadblocks that they've identified to make sure that charter flights carrying Americans or others to whom we have a special responsibility can depart Afghanistan safely, end quote. Uh, some, something's not adding up here. Tony, that's just not a true statement. They have been the hindrance. They have been the ones standing in the way at one moment. They could have those planes land anywhere they want to, but they have not. They have been the problem as they have been throughout this entire process 
We had American citizens. We had SIV individuals. We had uh, pastors. We had, I mean, you name it. We had, we had pregnant women. We had uh, a bus full of children. And the State Department was the ones preventing us from getting them through the airport to get on planes. And now they continue to be the problem. It is simply not true what Blinken is saying, somehow that they are working around the clock with members of Congress. The reality is they are working around the clock to work against members of Congress and against individuals who are doing everything they can to get out of Afghanistan. The problem on this end is our own government. It is the most shameful and disgusting thing I've ever experienced in my life as it relates to political activity. They are the problem, our U.S. government. Let's uh, transition here to looking at this Taliban government, this interim government that's been put in place. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, we, we've got t- known terrorists who the FBI are um, actually have uh, bounties on that are now leading this government. And, and as we said, these were individuals that were released from Guantanamo Bay. Um, I mean, th- this is this we're right back where we started 20 years ago, in my view. Well, it's even worse. I mean, because now we have no U.S. presence over there to even temper what they are doing. They are unhindered in whatever behavior they want to do uh, in instilling Sharia law and being a threat to the region. They are able now to do it in an unhindered fashion without any U.S. president presence to slow them down. And I I remember when when the the exchange took place. I believe it's 2008. Ob- uh, Obama uh, made the the exchange between Bergdahl and the, these five Gitmo terrorists. And I, President Trump, I think, made the most accurate statement after that when he said, in essence, that we uh, ourselves, the United States, we get Bergdahl, who is a traitor, in exchange for five of the most wanted terrorists in the world that the Taliban gets back. That is exactly what happened. And now it's coming back to bite us. It's coming back to bite the entire world. And now we are going to watch the development of a government that is going to reinstall uh, install the uh, development of and protection of terrorist organizations that the world now will have to deal with. Yeah, and you're right. It is. It's worse than it was 20 years ago because they also have about 85 billion dollars worth of American exactly. uh, military equipment, and they have uh, they have the confidence that they can uh, make America run because that's exactly what we've witnessed in the last uh, few weeks is that America, under the leadership of Joe Biden, tucked tail and ran from the uh, Taliban. Exactly. So, I mean, and when when have we ever done that? And we've and we have trusted and negotiated with the most radical left wing terrorist individuals that the world knows. And our administration under Joe Biden has felt comfortable, confident, negotiating, making deals with these individuals while leaving potentially thousands of Americans hanging in the balance in that country. And now, what's frightening to me is we're watching. Both the president say, let's turn the page and move on. And at the same time, we're watching a willing media, national media in this country, being willing to turn the page and go on to the next story of spending three trillion dollars in socialist uh, uh, ideology. It's like, what are we doing? We have who knows how many Americans stranded and we're walking away from them, leaving them in the hands of terrorists. Uh, it's it's unthinkable what's what's taking place before our eyes. L- let me ask you this final question. Is we're up against a break. You hear the music uh, starting, but is there any hope that Congress might be able the re- the Republicans in Congress lean on this administration to get something done for those people left behind? Tony, I can tell you, our office is going to continue it. I know there are many other offices who will. And I believe the Republican Party as a whole will continue to demand answers, will continue to demand that we get our people out of that country. Uh, And we're going to continue putting pressure both on the White House and on Nancy Pelosi to do what has to be done at this critical hour in our country. All right, Congressman Jody Heiss, always great to talk to you. Thanks for stopping by today. 
Charlie.